Brad and John, how are you both doing today? Good. Yeah. We're in Dublin, for goodness sakes. You are. You can't, get much, can't get much better than that. That's to be right. Uh, I am genuinely not blowing smoke when I say, as a film critic, people often say, like, what's your favorite movie? And that's, it's a no-go just to pick one. Yeah, yeah. But the first Incredibles was, is, in my top five movies of all time. Oh, Absolutely great. love you. the first Incredibles uh, movie. Thanks. Was there any... Uh, trepidation or concern at all where you were like this the first one was as close to perfect I think as you can get where you just like we just leave that alone and maybe just not do a sequel uh, that was more of Michael Giacchino's feeling than, yeah. than it was mine um, simply because I had such a good time making the first one I I knew that I wanted to return to it someday and I had uh, a core idea for this film when we were promoting the first one um, but it took me a long time to get the rest of it. So, uh, uh, you know, and to Pixar's credit, they were like, uh, you know, when you're ready, we're ready. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, they didn't stick a, a burr under my saddle or anything like that. I just, I went through, I was going through um, the IMDb page for The Incredibles 2, and I seen this bit of trivia there on the end, and I have to, I have to read it out to you because I thought it was hilarious. There was controversy when the title for this film was first released. While the first film was titled The Incredibles, this film was simply titled Incredibles 2. Many extreme fans expressed outrage, mostly <laughs> non-violently. Uh, mostly <laughs> non-violently, yeah, that's good. I was like, How was there a violent the reaction to the lack what, of the? What, the Incredibles 2 sounds stupid. Yeah, I, it, it doesn't, doesn't trip it, off it, the it's tongue. It's like The Incredibles 2. It's, it's like, like oh, it's too many the syllables. The Terminator 2. Yeah, I mean, yes. Terminator yeah. 2. Terminator Maybe we should have called it Incredibles 2 Judgment Day. Yeah, you know. <laughs> if, we no had a a yeah if we had some yeah. descriptive, you know, clause after it, it would have <laughs> been, a, it's that's crazy. It just sounds stupid. Well, this <laughs> one, we're obviously focusing on Elastigirl. Uh, and you, you said yourself you've had this uh, kernel of an idea for a while now. Uh, and it's been 14 years. And lately we have seen a fantastic uh, upsurge in uh, female-centric superheroes. Uh, was that something that you were so and happy to it, see if, coming if in advance? If you're a chauvinist, you, you'd say upscourge. You know? <laughs> that's yeah. true. But we're not, so that's no. Uh, okay, we're, we're, good. We're all big fans of uh, the female superhero <laughs> genre here. But were you, when you when you knew you had this so far ago, and you've seen the trend going that way, you must have been really happy to. to to know you, you know, were ahead of the I, I was just kind of two heads down, uh, you know, uh, to think too much about it. it it's just this was uh, a difficult film in that we had a year taken off, off our schedule, and that combined with high expectations leads to many a sleep in the, sleepless night. So, uh, uh, sure, I mean, you know, uh, uh, sure, if it if it fits with what's going on, that's nice, but. The, the real goal is to make something that's entertaining 100 years from now. And, and I thought it was a good way to explore different sides of Bob's and Helen's characters. And so that was the motivation more than any political kind of thing. But it can be drunk today. You can enjoy it today. You don't have to wait 100 years. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not like a fine <laughs> wine that needs to age for 100 years. You can drink it today. Yes, it, yeah. It's but I do look forward today. to being 134 years old and still enjoying it. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bob Odenkirk and Catherine Keener were fantastic additions to, to the voice cast. Thank you. Uh, when it came to choosing the characters' voices for this, uh, would they, were they something you had in mind? Were they people you? you those kind are of my knew? first choices yeah. for those roles. Absolutely, absolutely. And and um, I read something with some uh, uh, director recently, and he was giving a talk somewhere, and he was saying, you know, you never get your first choices, so don't write for your first choice. Just write the character, and you'll get what you'll get. And <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, I've gotten my first choices a lot. And, and, you know, it, for me, even if they say no, you have something specific in your mind. You know, if anything that helps you flesh it out in your mind is a good thing. And, you know, Peter O'Toole was my uh, first choice when they brought me onto Ratatouille. And they had someone else for the ego role. And I had to, and I liked that actor that they had, but I didn't see it as, as the character. I saw Peter O'Toole as the character. So, uh, um, you know, uh, absolutely, we've, we've been lucky right on down the line on, yeah. on these films and getting the people that we got. They are absolutely what I wanted. 
Has there ever been any uh, actor with a fantastic voice who you've yet to work with? Who, who out there who hasn't done an animated movie, you think they have a great voice and I, want, mm. I would love to work with those? I know that I've said this probably a hundred times, but I, I can't think of it at the moment. If we go change the subject, I'll probably think yeah, of it <laughs> really <laughs> shortly. Yeah. But obviously from this film, people have uh, divined that I'm a Breaking Bad slash Better Call Saul fan. Mm. So, uh, you know, uh, because uh, 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 the voice of Aaron Traub, uh, uh, Jonathan Banks, is also in this film. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, there's a, a, a ton of marvelous actors that I, that I would love to work with. Uh, a few months back, we spoke to uh, Leon Crick and Dalla Anderson. They obviously came over to Ireland as well to uh, speak of the fantastic Coco. Uh, what is it about Ireland that keeps drawing Pixar over? Because uh, I know well, once you're done here, you're going to be traveling around. A you bit know, I, it's just like I don't want to be a shameless ass kisser. Or anything. Ah, go on. <laughs> but it's fine. but if I were to say a general thing, and look, every country has the, the exceptions to this, and you know, I'm sure you have humorless people and in this country, but There's there probably is, one somewhere. There, <laughs> yes, but there is a general genial sense of humor to the con country that I've uh, experienced and uh, a natural inclination to storytelling, which to, means a lot to me. And, and uh, I think people, even if they're just talking about what happened to them last week, you know, when they were shopping, there's a sense of storytelling to the way they convey the ta tale. So for somebody that works in film as a storyteller, um, the storytelling DNA of Ireland is, is palpable. And, and is it true your artists don't pay income tax? Is that true? Is that true? <laughs> You'd have to ask Bono. I, no, I think, no, yeah, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think that may be I think true. We need to move uh, at here. least I've heard that. You know, that Bono may be. would be the one to ask. <laughs> You'd know more about that than I would. Brad and John, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. You know it's crazy, right? To help my family, I gotta leave it. To fix the law, I gotta break it. You've got to, so our kids can have that choice. Thank you, young man. Combustion imminent? What does that mean? Ah! It means fire, Robert. Green Slater interrupts this program for an important announcement.